Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 26. In this video we're going to have an introduction to fractions. So for our lesson objectives for today, we want to gain a basic understanding of fractions. We also want to learn the difference between a proper fraction, improper fraction, and mixed number. So up to this point in our pre-algebra course, we've really only thought about the whole numbers and the integers. But what happens when we have an amount that is larger than zero but less than one? Something that's a part of a whole amount. Well, when we come across this scenario, we can turn to fractions for help. And I know some of you watching this video already have extensive experience with fractions, while others have no experience whatsoever. No matter what, all of us have worked with fractions in our everyday life, even if we haven't realized it. So a typical scenario would involve you splitting up a pizza with your friends. So as an example, let's take a look at this pepperoni and cheese pizza that we have on the screen. So the first thing I want you to notice is that the pizza is cut up into four equal parts. All right, we have one, two, three, four equal parts. Now, when we work with fractions, we're gonna have some whole amount that's cut up into equal parts. So our whole amount would just be the pizza. So one pizza is our whole amount. It's cut up into four equal parts, so that means if I have four parts out of four parts, I have one pizza. Now let's suppose that three of your buddies come over to the house and there's a total of four of you. So let's put that there's four people. Now in the interest of fairness, we're gonna make sure that each person gets the same amount of pizza. So everybody's gonna get one slice out of a total of four equal slices. So each person would get one fourth of the pizza. Now you might say, where did that one fourth come from? Well, the one is called the numerator. This is the numerator. It's the top part of a fraction and it tells us the number of parts being discussed or used. Since we're talking about how much each person's gonna get, the numerator is a one because each person is getting one part or in terms of the pizza, one slice. Now the bottom number here is the denominator. This is the denominator. This tells me how many equal parts my whole amount is split up into. My one pizza, my whole amount, has been split up into four equal parts, so my denominator is a four. Now, this middle part is called a fraction bar. It's called a fraction bar. And later on, we're gonna learn that the fraction bar represents division. We actually have the numerator divided by the denominator. But we don't need to think about that for now. Just think of the fraction bar as a way to separate your numerator or your top part from your denominator. So in this scenario where there's a total of four people and we have four equal slices for our pizza, each person gets one slice out of four or one fourth of that whole pizza. So as we just saw, fractions are generally used to describe how many equal pieces, okay, how many equal pieces we have of a whole amount. Now in the previous example, we talked about how many equal pieces each person got, right? Each person got one fourth of a whole pizza. So let's take a look at this cookie here. So again, the cookie represents our whole amount. So one cookie is what we have. And again, you'll notice that it's split up into four equal parts. Four equal parts. Three of the parts you'll notice have chocolate chips. That's what these black circles are. And then one part has macadamia nuts. Okay, that's what the white circles are. What if I was to ask you, how much of this cookie has chocolate chips? Well, again, three parts out of the four have chocolate chips, so our numerator is going to be a three. Okay, our numerator is going to be a three. Again, the numerator is the number of parts being used or discussed. In this case, we're discussing how much of the cookie has chocolate chips. That answer is one, two, three, so we have three there, so that's our numerator. So let me just label this. This is the numerator. We have our fraction bar to separate the numerator from the denominator. And the bottom number of the denominator is a four because we have four equal pieces in our whole amount. Again, this is the denominator. What if I asked you how much of the cookie has macadamia nuts? Well, that would be one fourth, right? We have one piece or one part out of a total of four equal parts. So the numerator is gonna change now we're discussing macadamia nuts, so that's gonna be a one. 
the denominator will not because I still have four equal parts in this cookie. So now we're talking about the fraction 1 fourth. As another example, let's take a look at this apple that's cut into two equal pieces. So we have one piece and then a second piece. So let's suppose it's me and you and we're in a room and we both want the apple. So we decide in the interest of fairness that we'll cut it down the middle, just like we have. Each person has an equal amount. How much will each person get? Well, each person gets one piece out of a total of two equal pieces, right? The numerator is a one. The denominator is a two. Right, the numerator again tells me the number of parts being used or discussed. And again, we're discussing how much each person is going to get. Each person is going to get one part. So that's why the numerator is one. The denominator is two because there's two equal parts in the whole amount, right? In the apple, we've cut it up into two equal parts. So the denominator is two. Each person is going to get one half of the apple. Now let's suppose as we're about to bite into this apple, six more people show up and they say, hey, we each want an equal amount. So now we've got to cut up the apple into eight equal pieces, eight equal pieces. And each person asks you, how much am I going to get? Well, they're going to get one piece out of a total of eight equal pieces with a fraction one eighth, right? So one again is the numerator and eight is the denominator. So again, each person would get one eighth or one piece out of a total of eight equal pieces for this apple. Let's say that you're watching a video on the web and this video has three equal parts. So let's say this is the first part. This is part one and then this is part two and this is part three. Okay. And I know this might not be perfectly equal how I drew it, but let's just pretend that it's three equal parts. Now the part in red shows you what you've already watched. So what if I asked you the question, how much of this video have you watched so far? Well, if we look at the red progress bar, we see that that takes up one part out of a total of three equal parts for the video. So you've watched one part, again, out of a total of three equal parts. That's the fraction one third. Again, where one is your numerator, this is the numerator, and three is the denominator. Now, what if I ask you the question, how much of the video is left? Well, I have this part here and then this part here. So unwatched, unwatched, we would have two parts out of a total of three equal parts. So that's two thirds. So two is the numerator in this case and three is the denominator. Again, in each case, the video was split up into three equal parts. So that's where our denominator came from in the watched and the unwatched. For the watched, we had seen one part out of the three. So that's how we got a numerator of one. For the unwatched, we have not watched two parts out of the three. So that's how we got a numerator of two. All right, so I think we have the basics down on how to come up with a numerator and denominator. Let's just do a quick practice exercise to see if you can identify the numerator and denominator in each. And we're going to start out with one fifth. So the top number is the numerator. And I'm going to write it out for the first one and then I'm going to abbreviate after that. And the bottom number, the five, is the denominator. So for the fraction one fifth, you have one as the numerator, five as the denominator. So this means I have one part out of a total of five equal parts. Next, we'll look at the fraction two ninths. The two is the numerator. So I'm just going to put a capital N, the nine is the denominator and I'm going to put a capital D. So I have two parts out of a total of nine equal parts. Next, we have the fraction one fourth. One is the numerator. That's the top number. Four is the denominator. That's the bottom number. So for this scenario, I have one part out of a total of four equal parts. Then for three eighths, three is going to be our numerator and eight is going to be our denominator. Again, if I have three eighths of something, I have three parts out of a total of eight equal parts. Okay, we'll look at two more. Five sevenths, five is the numerator, seven is the denominator. Again, the numerator is in the top, the denominator is in the bottom. And if I have five sevenths of something, 
I have five parts out of a total of seven equal parts. Then for the last one, I have 15 seventeenths. So 15, the number on top is the numerator. 17, the number on the bottom is the denominator. If I have 15 seventeenths of something, then I have 15 parts out of a total of 17 equal parts. So there's kind of more to fractions than just what we covered so far. Once you start getting higher in math, you're going to replace your division symbol with a fraction bar. And I kind of talked about this in the beginning when I said the fraction bar represents division. So I want to just quickly cover some important division rules that we need to remember when we're working with fractions. So the first one is going to be that any non-zero number that is divided by itself is going to result in one. So if I have something like four divided by four, I can now write this using a fraction as four over four or four fourths, and this is going to be equal to one. And think about the scenario we had with a pizza. Let me just go all the way back up real quick. So kind of looking at this, I see that I've split up my pizza into four equal slices. So if I consume four fourths of the pizza, or I eat four pieces out of a total of four equal pieces, then I've consumed one whole pizza. The next rule to remember is that zero divided by any non-zero number is always zero. So zero divided by, let's say three equals zero. And now we can write this using a fraction as zero over three equals zero. And just think about having something that's cut up into equal parts of three and you get zero parts. So how much of it did you get? You got zero. And right? if I get zero out of a total of three equal parts, I'm still getting zero. So fractions represent division of the numerator by the denominator. We can write a division problem using fractions. So again, if we see something like, let's say eight divided by four, this is traditionally how we write it in elementary school. Now we can write it using fractions as eight divided by four like that. The numerator divided by the denominator. Here we have eight divided by four. Eight, the leftmost number, the dividend goes up on top as the numerator. Four, your divisor goes on the bottom as your denominator. So eight divided by four, we know that's two. Or something like 20, I don't know, divided by five. We could write this as 20 over five. Right, it's just the numerator divided by the denominator. So the leftmost number, your dividend, goes on top as the numerator. Your rightmost number, your divisor, goes on the bottom as your denominator. So 20 divided by five is four. And we can do one more. Let's say we had, I don't know, 100 divided by 25. So we could write this as a fraction. We take 100, that's gonna be our numerator, and then 25 is gonna be our denominator, right? Numerator divided by denominator. 100 divided by 25 is the same as 100 over 25, and this is gonna be equal to four. Okay, so let's kind of wrap up our lesson by just talking about the differences between a proper fraction, an improper fraction, and a mixed number. So a proper fraction is used to describe a quantity whose value is less than one. So the easy way to tell if you have a proper fraction is just to look at the numerator and see if it's less than the denominator. If it is, you have a proper fraction. So something like two fifths, or five sevenths, or two elevenths, or one ninth. In each case, the numerator is smaller than the denominator. If I got something like 15 sevenths, that's not a proper fraction. The numerator is larger than the denominator. This is an improper fraction. Now, before we go any further, let me just try to warn you that your teacher might try to trip you up with some negative fractions. Let's say you get something like negative two thirds, negative two thirds. If you get a negative fraction, ignore the negative sign and just pretend the fraction's positive. So I'm just gonna think about this as positive two thirds and just look at the two and the three. The numerator is smaller than the denominator, so it's a proper fraction. I can just put my negative sign back and say, okay, negative two thirds is a proper fraction. If I had something like negative 11 ninths, ignore the negative sign, pretend it's 11 ninths, and look at the 11, it's bigger than nine, so it's not a proper fraction. Okay, it's not a proper fraction. So that means negative 11 ninths is not a proper fraction either. So kind of next up, an improper fraction is used to describe a quantity equal to or larger than one. So kind of the easy way to think about this is that if your numerator is the same as or larger than your denominator, you have an improper fraction. So like eight over eight, the numerator is the same as the denominator, so this is improper. 
right? So equal to or larger than one. If you had something like 13 over 11, equal to or larger than one. Again, if you get negative numbers involved, just think about them as if they were positive, right? Take the absolute value before you think about the definition. So if I had something like negative 15 over 14, let's say I try to go by this definition. An improper fraction is used to describe a quantity equal to or larger than one. Well, any negative number is less than one. So if you try to apply this definition using this as a negative, you get the wrong answer. So that's what I'm saying. Just ignore the negative sign. Just look and see if the numerator is bigger than the denominator. 15 is larger than 14. And so you would know this is an improper fraction, right? Negative 15 fourteenths is improper. Okay, the last thing we're going to learn about is called a mixed number. So a mixed number is kind of a fancy way to write an improper fraction, right? And you can go back and forth and we'll see how to do that in the next lesson. So basically what it is, it's the sum of a whole number and a proper fraction. So something like three and one fourth. And what this is, is it's three plus one fourth. We just write it like this for convenience, right? And a lot of students get confused and think that's multiplication because they're sitting next to each other. But no, it's three plus one fourth or something like six and one eighth. Right, this is six plus one eighth. But it's very important that you have a whole number and then a proper fraction. It can't be a whole number and an improper fraction. Okay, so let's look at one final quick exercise. We just want to determine whether each is a proper fraction, improper fraction, or mixed number. So we're going to take a look at seven fifths. So the numerator is larger than the denominator. This is improper. Again, that's all you need to look at. 3 elevenths, the numerator is smaller than the denominator, so this is proper. For 4 fifths, the numerator is smaller than the denominator, so this is proper. For 9 and 1 eighth, it's easy to see that this is a mixed number, right? It's a mixed number. And I don't think anybody gets confused between mixed numbers and proper fractions and improper fractions. They mostly get confused on the definition between a proper fraction and an improper fraction. For a mixed number, you have a whole number just hanging out to the left. So it's pretty obvious that it's a mixed number. For 10 sevenths, the 10, the numerator, is larger than the 7. So this is an improper fraction. For 6 sevenths, the 6, the numerator, is smaller than the denominator, 7. So this is proper. 